How's everybody? Well, I think it's uh, a lot like I've said before, you know, in games like this, it doesn't really matter what your record is or what everybody's saying out there about anything that you've done to this point or you haven't done to this point, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, I think when these kind of games get played, uh, players need to make sure that um, they're ready to play their best. And uh, it's very important, you know, to me that everybody buys into the principles and values of the organization um, and to each other in terms of being positive, playing to a standard in terms of how you do your job, the kind of effort that you give, the kind of toughness that you play with, the kind of discipline to execute you have. Um, and, you know, that all goes into how you work to prepare uh, and get ready to do that when the game comes. And I know it's difficult at this time of the season, uh, but it's the most important thing that anybody can do. Uh, and, if, and if people aren't focused on those kind of things, they're not usually going to get the kind of outcome that they really want. Um, so, you know, the, the emphasis here is to try to get the players to focus on just that and make sure they got the right mindset to go out there and do those things the way we need to do them so we have an opportunity to be successful in the game. Every team that you play, every team that you play in the SEC has good players and they're very capable of making plays. And regardless of what everybody thinks, um, you know, these guys are going to come in here and try to give it their best shot and make their season with what they do in this game. So uh, we need to be ready for that. We need to play very well and, and make sure we prepare the way we need to prepare so that we can go out and play that way. We'll start over here with Chandler. Tennessee's played really well against the pass this year. What have you seen from their secondary that, uh, that's difficult to throw against? Well, you know, they do a good job with their pressures. They do a good job of mixing up their coverages. Uh, they're athletic. They're very aggressive in the back end. Um, so I think they've done a really good job uh, against a lot of teams this year, created a lot of negative plays, pressed the quarterback well, uh, and have done a really good job of uh, executing and mixing up the coverages and uh, not allowing the other teams to sort of get it zeroed in on what they do, and uh, I, I think that's been very helpful to them. Back up front here with Mark. Just wondering, how have you seen Rashawn Evans play uh, since the injury, and, and what has he brought to that team in terms of the defense in terms of leadership? Well, I, I think Rashawn has done, you know, better and better each week. Uh, we tried to bring him back slowly from his injury and um, didn't play him a whole lot when he came back at first and just tried to work him back into it. Uh, I still don't think he's probably 100%, but uh, I think his presence out there, his knowledge and experience, uh, his leadership, uh, the example that he sets are all really, really important to you know our defensive players. He has a lot of diversity as a player, inside, back, or outside guy, can rush, can be a buck, can do a lot of different things. And, um, you know, he, may, he impacts the game wherever we put him. Uh, and with the loss of some of our other players that were those types of players that and can play those kind of roles, uh, it's, it's really been good to get him back and to see him play well and do that very well. We'll go with Ryder, here on the left. How has the performance of the secondary allowed you to maybe send a few more blitzes? Um, just the, I mean, your confidence in their ability to cover, and also are you surprised by the uh, inside linebackers having more sacks than some of the outside linebackers? Look, I want to, and anybody that can affect the quarterback to affect the quarterback. It doesn't matter to me who it is. Um, I don't think we've done a great job of that on a consistent basis. You know, we've had too many guys running around on us. We haven't controlled the quarterback. Uh, we have at times put pretty good pressure on them and affected them. Um, and you know, we we I guess got a fair amount of sacks. But you know, in the secondary, it's an interesting thing. You know, it doesn't matter how you did the last play. It doesn't matter how you did the last game. Uh, because the players that you play against, it takes such great attention to detail to be able to go out there and execute and play your techniques so that you don't give up big plays, um, that everybody's got to stay focused on how they need to adjust, what they need to do, how they need to communicate, how they need to play together uh, so that everybody's on the same page and you don't turn people loose and you don't give up big plays. So um, my confidence has not changed at, at all. Uh, in terms of what our scheme is and what we try to do and how we try to mix things up. Um, that doesn't mean I'm disappointed in anybody. I just know what it takes to continue to do that and how we need to continue to, to work together to be able to accomplish that as a group. In the back with Scott. 
Nick, these kind of, you talked about it Monday and today, these kind of weeks are so dangerous. You've done well avoiding upsets, and I think it's because of training your guys psychologically. So how, in these kind of weeks, it's a lot more psychological than physical reps? I know physical reps are still important, but. Well, physical reps are important because you need to go out there and do it right. Uh, if you don't have the right mindset and you don't have the right mental energy and intensity and focus, you can't get the right mental rep. All right, so uh, that, that's when you create bad habits. All right, that's when you end up showing up at the game not ready to play. Uh, that's when, when they get in the game uh, and you sort of had this arrogant attitude about how you prepared, uh, things don't go like you want them to go in the game, so you get frustrated, and then all of a sudden, you know, top ten teams get beat. That's how they get beat. And, um, you know, I think everybody in our organization needs to understand that. Uh, but it's everybody's choice. You know, you choose all this stuff. You know, you choose your energy, you choose how you want to practice, you choose how you get ready to play, uh, you choose how you respect the other team, uh, you choose your mindset every day, you choose how you're going to play in practice, choose how you're going to get along with your teammates, choose all that. Everybody chooses it every day. Everybody in this room chooses it too. All right, so, and you know what? I can't make them choose it right. I, I can only tell them over and over and over and over until I can't talk anymore. And if they respond the right way, we'll be fine. If they don't, we can struggle. Two more, Alex, and then Tony. I know you touched on the secondary earlier, but specifically Ronnie, how has he kind of uh, evolved you know, from where he was as a freshman, uh, kind of even as an attitude kind of player, and emotionally on the field, and, uh, his leadership? It seems like he's, he's taking steps in that, that direction. Um, you know, Ronnie, does a good job. Um, you know, when Ronnie's got the right mindset, he's as good a player as anybody. Uh, I think maintaining that focus is really important for him. Uh, make, ma maintaining that sort of emotional ebb uh, that allows him to be uh, sharp as a tack, uh, but still under control in terms of what he's doing and how he's affecting other people. And when he does that, he's fabulous. Uh, and he's played well for us this year, and hopefully we can continue to get him to do that. Finish up with Tony at the front. Henry Ruggs has uh, touched on in each of his last three games. What, what does he do that, that enables him to be a threat near the end zone? I don't know. What does anybody do? I mean, he gets open, and then he catches the ball. And we call plays that gives him a chance to get open. So that gives him a chance to catch the ball, and it gives the quarterback a chance to throw it to him. Um, I don't know exactly how I should answer that question. I mean, we wouldn't play the guy if he didn't, wasn't talented and wasn't able to get open. Uh, we have confidence in him, like we do Jerry Judy, like we do Smitty, like all the freshman guys. Um, you know, if there was another guy in his place that had probably caught the ball in the same play too. Um, so I, I, I don't I'm not trying to be wise ass. I just don't know how to answer the question. I mean, a guy runs a pass pattern, he gets open, and we throw him the ball. I mean, that, I think that's what he's supposed to do. That's what the quarterback's supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to design. And, you know, the more athletic and the faster they are, the harder they are to cover. And those the kind of guys we want around here. So I don't know what else to say. I'll cover it. Thanks, Coach. That's it? Yep. Thank you.